Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombies, and look who's come to Wimbledon. Manchester United. Now, you don't have to know me well to know that I hate Manchester United more than I hate any public institution in the world. Um, but we're going to host them, and we're going to be nice about it. They're one of the uh, technically most successful clubs because uh, it turns out that you can buy some success. Uh, and I know that there are many Manchester United supporters among Wimbley Wombly supporters. Uh, Wimbley Wombly supporters usually have another club that they also support, and in many cases that's uh, Manchester United. So I don't want to say anything that would offend those people, like, for instance, that uh, Manchester United, the club, the crest, the players, the supporters are all terrible people. As you can see, uh, we are uh, not doing that great in the uh, Barclays Premier League, but we're also not doing that poorly. We're right there, sort of like upper mid-table, I would call us. Out of the European spots, the top four teams get to play in the Champions League next year, but, uh, but not, do, you know, not, doing, not doing half bad, if I may say so myself. Um, today's video topic comes from uh, James Kehoe, or his actual name is, uh, is Seamus McCogig. Um, I hope I said that right, Seamus, um, who is a... Um, oh, come on, boys. There you go. That's good stuff. That's Frankenstein. Frankenstein at work. Frankenstein out of bounds. Um, who wants me to talk about uh, Irish literature? I, I am a, a huge fan of Irish literature, and I started out... Um, oh, by the way, Seamus, James, uh, contributed to the Project for Awesome. Um, oh, 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 oh! Off the post! All my dreams almost came true, Meredith. In that moment, I saw everything that could have happened... Wimbledon beating Manchester United at home, back, in, back at Plough Lane, playing against Manchester United, winning the game, the tears fall. Oh, my God, it would have been amazing, but instead off the post. The post is a cruel mistress. Um, so um, I, took, I, I, I took an Irish literature class, or, or actually two or three in college, um, and then ended up reading a lot of... Uh, a lot of Joyce uh, in, in college, as, as many uh, undergraduate English majors do, um, reading Ulysses and uh, Dubliners and Portrait of the Artist as a young man, and then writing a lot about Ulysses uh, in my last uh, year or so of, of college. I really enjoy, um, I mean, I guess I, I, I think Americans are, uh, relate well to Irish literature, um, partly because it's a, it's a literature of trying to f understand nationhood and nationality, um, and that's something that, 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 that Americans are very concerned with. Um, you know, I Ireland uh, wasn't independent for many years. It was a colony of England, and, uh, and even though there is an Irish language, most, um, most Irish writers uh, in the last couple hundred years have written in English mostly, and um, uh, I, I think that's... You know, in the U.S., we're always trying to understand what a nation is. There's that great line. There's a great line in Ulysses. Oh, boy, where um, Bloom is asked uh, what a nation is because he's Jewish and he's sort of having his Irish patriotism question. And he says, um, a nation is the same people in the same place or also other places. Um, and, oh, oh, it's true. My dreams have come true. John Green, Paul, John Green, Paul, John Green. It happened. It happened. Oh, I'm like, you can't hear me. I'm yelling as loud as I can. Your husband is hugging you. Everything is beautiful. Oh, John Green is beautiful, beautiful head. His beautiful, strong, meaty American head meeting with the ball. And all of, and all of a sudden, it seems like, in this crazy run of games where we played Manchester City, Manchester United, and Arsenal in consecutive and three consecutive games, it seems like it's not impossible that we could emerge from those three games with seven points. How amazing would that be? I mean, that would be, that reshapes our whole season. It reshapes our expectations for this season. We go from thinking, man, this is going to be a long season and hopefully we'll just avoid relegation and have another season in the Premier League next year to starting to dream a little bit. Um, this is incredibly exciting. Okay, we've got a nice ball there. Didn't go to anyone, but it was nice. It was an attractive ball. Um, so, like, I think that's where my interest in Irish literature started was in this idea of, like, what constitutes a nation. Like, when we say a nation is the same people living in the same place or also different places like what does that mean um because he was talking about in that moment about the irish irish 
diaspora, you know, that many Irish people don't live in Ireland and haven't in the last 150 years, but then also talking about the Jewish diaspora um, and, and, you know, and, and the question of like, can you be a, 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 na a, a citizen of, of two nations? You know, if you're a, or, you know, in, in the U.S., we also often talk about Asian Americans or uh, even more specifically, like we might talk about Sri Lankan Americans or, you know, um, and I find that really interesting because, oh, oh, you know what I find interesting? Being up 2-0 to Manchester United. Antique Ball John Green saying, ah, you know what, let's not celebrate too much. Let's not, we don't want to humiliate our opponents because we're already up 1-0. Now we're up 2-0. Let's calm down, not be too much, too jerky about it. We don't want to make them feel bad because they're getting the crap kicked out of them by the Wimbly Womblies. Oh, this is beautiful. Everything is turning out better than I could have dreamt. As you can see, we've had six shots. They've had none. Monkwa Monkwa is going to save that 10 times out of 10. Um, and, uh, but there's also a lot of other, you know, uh, there's also just a lot of, for whatever reason, a lot of great writers have emerged from Ireland. I mean, not just uh, the sort of like classic, uh, you know, Yates and Joyce and um, all that, but also uh, poets like Yvonne Boland, whom I just think very highly of, and uh, um, Beckett arguably Beckett pretty Irish I would think um, and uh, I like Brendan Behan a lot um, but um, but I also like uh, you know like uh, Irish mystery writers and uh, sort of like that that whole world of the uh, the Irish uh, kind of like working class Irish uh, private detective uh, stuff so I'm a pretty, I, I, I like to read pretty broadly. Um, I don't, I, I can't say I've read a lot of Irish romance novels, although I love romance novels. I've, se I've read some that are set in Ireland in like old Irish castles in the 18th century, but um, I don't think they were by Irish writers. But I do love, um, I, uh, but I, and I, I love, I mean, I, I, of course, like all, uh, like all English majors, I love Yeats, probably the greatest poet of the 20th century. Um, despite being extremely, uh, extremely weird and uh, and obsessed with you know a, a mythology that at times doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but um, you know there's so much of Yeats that's very helpful to contemporary readers. I think uh, uh, the idea of um, the the center being unable to hold is something from the Second Coming is something I think a lot about. Um, things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Um, yeah. Yep, it's true. It's very, very, very difficult for the center to hold and for things not to fall apart. It doesn't seem to be the nature of things to uh, to not fall apart. Um, but yeah, Joyce is definitely um, like the Irish writer I've read the most of and know the best. Oh, that's a great pass. What a pass. What a searching, beautiful pass for John Green. A goal from a hat trick. Oh, and he somehow couldn't get the shot off. Oh, but then he made a great tackle. He made a great, he leveled him. That, that, that little man has been, he might have to come off now because he's been humiliated. He's embarrassed. Come on. Let's get aggressive, guys. Let's get aggressive. I'm not satisfied with 2-0 against Manchester United. I want to win by 9. A nice unnecessary slide tackle. This is what I like to see. Um, so many lines in Ulysses that resonate with me, um, even, you know, years and years and years after I first read the book, uh, History, uh, Stephen said, is a nightmare um, from which I'm trying uh, to awake. You're, uh, the idea of, the, uh, of being super saturated uh, with the religion in which you say you do not believe, which I think is a very American, um, American thing. Whether Americans are religious or, or, or secular, they tend, to be, um, they tend to be super saturated with religion regardless, I think. Um, whether it's the religion they don't believe in or the religion they do, it's that it's the obsession with, um, uh, there seems to be an obsession with it regardless, uh, a kind of like American fascination. And I don't know, I, again, I don't live in Ireland, so I don't feel like I can speak to Irishness, but I do feel like at times there's an American fascination with, uh, you know, the, the radical other, whether the radical other is radically atheist or radically theistic. Um, and that's something that's that's very much a part of uh, of Ulysses. 
Um, and also, I mean, just, you know, it was amazing. I mean, the book was written in, in you know, the early 19th, uh, the early 20th century. And, um, but it, it, it foresaw so much of what was coming. I mean, Bloom is an ad man, one of the first people, or not first, I guess, but one of the first real generation of, of people to make their living in advertising. And now we have, you know, not just so many people working in the world of advertising and marketing, but entire, um, you know, entire pop cultural events dedicated to it, like Mad Men. And, um, and you know, we think of Mad Men as being a, a show that's about uh, the sort of birth of, of advertising, the birth of widespread, y ubiquitous advertising, but really, uh, Ulysses is that. I mean, Ulysses takes that back another uh, two generations. So um, there's a lot about Ulysses. Oh, dang it, I was offside. There's a lot about Ulysses that I think uh, just foresaw the coming world. And in its metafictional quality is the great line in the last chapter where Molly Bloom says, Oh, James, he let me up out of this when uh, Molly appears to be aware that she is inside of a novel that's being written by James Joyce, um, which, you know, is a really... Im not certainly not the first like metafictional moment I, or post postmodern moment in in uh, fiction, but one of the first and a really important one. That's a great ball. Oh, I can't get on the end of it. Sermon fast, not quite fast enough. Eighty third minute. Uh, time to make some substitutions. Got to bolster that midfield, Meredith, because we got to get John Green that third goal. It would be such a wonderful thing to see a John Green hat trick, a historic John Green hat trick. We're going to bring on Palacios. He doesn't play a ton, um, but I like him. He's a man of courage. Uh, and that's, we're trying to, I've been saying this recently, but I really mean it. The Wimbley Womblies are hiring for talent, but we're also hiring for courage right now because uh, that ability to get on the ball, um, to close down on defenders, to press and press and press, to have an extremely high work rate, that is um, how Wimbledon, with, with, with less good players, are going to compete with teams like Manchester United, um, by essentially by wanting it. Oh, my God, speaking of not wanting it enough, I really need you to get to that ball, case ain't loose. I know it wasn't a great pass. I need you to get to that ball. That guy, has a, he has a chin, just the chin beard, you know? He has the Callum Kennedy haircut and just the chin beard. I don't know which of our players that is, but I need to have a talk to him about some of his life, life decisions. Hell's Pels. Hell's Pels on the ball. Hell's Pels on the ball. Oh, Hell's Pels. Can't, Pels Pels doesn't like to give up on it. Here we go. Pass. Pass. Yes. Pass. Yes. John Green. Oh, trying to get John Green a goal, and Manchester United knows that we're trying to get John Green a goal. Did he get enough space? He got fouled from behind for the love of God. Oh, that's just terrible refereeing. Manchester United's getting the calls even in FIFA. Oh, I hate this. I hate this team. Sorry. I know that I shouldn't say that out loud, but I do. I do. There's a few things. You get, you get a few hates in this world. For me, Manchester United is a bunch of them. Come on. Turn around. Turn around. Pass to John Green. It's not a bad pass. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's going to end 2-0. Congratulations to the Wimbley Womblies on a historic victory at home against United. Suck it, Manchester United. You're going down. We're going up. What? Am I too excited? Meredith felt that I was too excited. Suck it, squad and shame, Vidic. Best wishes.